Hello. <clears throat> In this video, I am going to talk about a recursive algorithm. I am going to really start off with some basics and uh, um, we will see how far we can go. Okay. Here is a interesting picture. Um, from Wikipedia. So if you look closely, hopefully you will understand uh, why I call it uh, interesting. So this person with a very interesting outfit, you can see, you can see the picture in the this uh, uh, kind of cereal box, right? And also in the uh, cup and if you look closely and in that serial box picture particularly you can hopefully you can see the same thing again so you can see it's kind of recursive picture so this picture is the same as the original one <laughs> kind of hard to see okay so that's a kind of one example for recursion Let's see, we have more here. Here is another interesting picture. Um, I believe this is called Bandelbrot set or something. You know, so, sorry, I didn't check the name. Um, so, <coughs> self similarity, they call it, because the, the big picture. When you look at a kind of any portion that looks very similar, okay. So the whole picture, and if you look at the individual parts, you can see this portion kind of looks uh, quite similar to the, uh, the the whole picture, and similarly this por portion looks very similar. Even the parts, see, the outside they kind of look reasonably similar to the big picture, okay. Okay, this one is a little bit simpler. Um, you have this big triangle with this very interesting pattern. Then you look into this individual portion, right? So this this portion, for example, that looks very similar to the big big one, the whole piece. And similarly, if you look into any one portion of that. Or any one portion of that need not be this side it can be other sides too <laughs> okay so anything looks like uh, very similar to the original picture right so uh, as you zoom in it uh, looks very similar um, so to draw this you know this uh, you can use this uh, so-called recursion mechanism okay you kind of get a vague idea now hopefully so Let's uh, let's do just uh, one or two examples, and then we'll go to the nitty gritty. Okay, let's say you are in uh, college, and uh, your grandma misses you. She sends this big gift box. Okay, so you go ahead and open it. You can see it's glowing okay glowing with stuff and uh, you open it you get all this stuff you know that phone doesn't look too fancy right at least the watch looks fancy okay so let's assume that that phone is very fancy okay um, just a world picture and there you have three more boxes uh, because uh, originally your grandma wanted to send just one box then she kept collecting more boxes then she didn't want to repack so you just threw it everything in a big pack and send that to you okay so now if somebody asks you what's the value of the whole box right so whole big box right value of value of the whole big box how will you write that equation? 
let's do the simpler portions first the price of the phone price of the watch right and what about the other ones well we don't know what's in it right so since we don't know what's in it we can try to use the same function value so let's call this box one box two box three we can write it as value of box one value of box two value of box three so somebody asks value of big box you respond with this uh, equation obviously price of the phone and price of the watch we know right so let's say we know at least so price of the phone let's say three hundred dollars and the price of the watch two hundred dollars this whole thing works out to be five hundred dollars right this portion this portion works out to be five hundred dollars so five hundred plus value of box one plus value of box two plus value of box three right so you cannot simplify any further because we have no clue what's inside box one box two box three so that's a kind of philosophy behind recur recursion when you take a big problem you kind of try to break it down you then you represent in terms of the solution for the smaller problems okay so okay let's see so we wrote that uh, equation <coughs> so the recursion is uh, quite popular in math definitions okay we'll see one very soon and also the concept is uh, used in uh, inductive proofs let me give an example for example 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus the arithmetic series right up to n equal to n into n plus 1 by 2 right so how will you prove okay i'm not going to go through the full proof here so typically we do this base case base case n equal to 1 well if this n equal to 1 you know that it's just 1 and it's 1 into 2 by 2 so that's going to be um, that's true so we have to prove that n equal to 1 we have to prove that this is true that's a base case then we assume assume for n equal to some k equation is true okay so base case you have to prove then assume for n equal to k the equation is true now you have to prove for step n equal to k plus 1 so up to n equal to k we assume that the equation is true and n equal to k plus 1 you have to kind of uh, prove based on what you have you have to prove that that's correct okay so typically what you do is well 1 to k it should be k into k plus 1 by 2 then when you add the k plus 1 other side also you know works out to be correct something like that we go on right you want me to work on it <laughs> okay let's see so i'm just going to try it uh, let's see one i don't have much space here okay one plus two plus three plus all the way to k equal to k into k plus one by two right so now when you do n equal to k plus 1 and this side will be this side you are adding k plus 1 
right and the other side also you will be adding k plus 1. So, but you will be getting two terms directly, okay, I am getting into too much math here, okay, anyway, let us try. So, we are going to get two terms, k into k plus 1 by 2 plus k plus 1, right, that is from this previous equation which we assumed it is true, right, and there is another term n equal to k plus 1 directly you apply there and let us see what we get. k plus 1 into k plus 2 by 2, right. So, question is whether these two terms are same, right. This term does it really is equal to this term? Well, you have to kind of dance around little bit plus k plus 1 by 2. You can write it as 2 into that by 2, right. So, now, now I hope uh, from the math knowledge we can say that there is a k plus 1 common term, right, by 2. In the top you can see there is a k plus 1 common term and the other two k plus 2, you can write like that, right. So, I will not go any deeper than this, I did not even plan to do this far, ok. So, base case and we assume up to a level, then the step we prove. If you look at it, you know, this makes lot of sense because on the base case, if you take this step, n equal to 1 is true, then n equal to 2 is true, n equal to 3 is true, n equal to 4 is true. So, so, you have proven the base case, you have proven the step, step that is pretty good, right. So, just that by assuming n equal to k, we made it very generic, that way uh, it applies for any steps basically, ok. Um, ok, let us keep going. Now, uh, now let us uh, do the factorial, ok. So, let us write it, uh, uh, write it in two ways. Most of the time you write kind of n factor in this notation in math. So, this 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into all the way n minus 1 into n, right. That is the n factorial. So, here is another way to write the same thing n factorial is equal to 1, n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 if n is greater than 1, it is 1 otherwise. So, uh, <laughs> I missed the most important part, n into n minus 1 factorial. Okay. So, this is one way to write, the first way to write, this is another way to write. So, this one uses the recurs recursion, see n factorial equal to n into n minus 1 factorial. So, just checking something, okay. So, <clears throat> so how will you code this? Okay, so let's see. Let's uh, take a break here and uh, uh, jump to coding. And uh, I'm going to just use a very simple JGrasp editor for Java. Similar concept in C++. It's not very different. Okay, so let's go ahead and code it here. Let's see. Static int factorial of the n. There is going to be two factorials, recursion and recursive and non-recursive, right? Factorial, non-recursive. So, you are going to implement both of those here, okay? So, how are you going to implement factorial uh, using recursion? Very simple. So, we, we, we wrote this equation 
you just implement exactly same way if n is greater than or equal to greater than 1 and do this otherwise you know else it's return 1 okay just uh, implement it exactly like that if n is greater than 1 return n into factorial recursion n minus 1 else return 1 okay it's real if you look at it it's exactly same what I did here um, right so it, this is just a mathematical way of writing this is just a I have made it a code that's the only difference okay so very much equivalent you know I wish it is that equivalent for the first case it's not okay so the first case let's write for the first case so you're going to multiply 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into like that right so how will you do that well we have to explicitly multiply here integer result equal to 1 right for i equal to 1 i less than n less than i equal to n i plus plus result multiply it with i then return result okay so you're basically you're using a loop to multiply so many times and uh, return the value okay return the result so that will result in multiplying sorry any value of n 1 into 2 into 3 into like that all the way to n okay okay so now let's uh, convince ourselves that both compute the same results okay Recursion space non recursion. Okay, let's compile and run. So I can see both mechanisms are computing their good values and at some point things go wrong if you start to see negative numbers and stuff like that okay nothing to do with our code that's to do with our integer see if you look at it here right here that looks okay or is it incorrect let's see 12 multiplied by 13 this portion right this number multiplied by 13 you can see right away that's wrong <laughs> because that's a 4 appearing there right so it cannot be 4 appearing there right that's because this is really overflowing see that's a uh, kilobytes that's the million and uh, when you multiply this with 12 it becomes 4 billion and beyond right in fact it will become around multiply by 10 becomes 4.7 billion but the integer size is only 32 bits and its range is minus 2 billion to plus 2 billion you know 2.4 or something i don't remember so it is overflowing okay so you can change this to long and uh, try uh, all kind of mechanism but that's really outside our scope okay i won't worry too much about it 
okay at this point you are welcome to try it out okay chain this to long and uh, or even double you know you can try that um, okay okay so i want to return back to this so that's what we wrote the code right and so the question is non recursive also we wrote question is how did the recursion work you know when you look at the code it looks kind of little bit uh, magical you know this one really we know what's going on we are using a loop to multiply completely and return whereas here you came in with the value of n n was passed in and if if check is uh, successful and then we go ahead and invoke the recursion and uh, it's kind of seem to work magically right so remember it will be keep on going this way until the n becomes 1 okay so let's go back here so to understand that okay here is another picture from wikipedia is uh, this this picture shows how the stack structure works stack memory works how does it uh, really help us for invoking functions okay invoking functions and methods so here we are trying to do a draw a square from we are trying to draw a square so that's why we invoke the draw square so so when you have draw squares as parameter right let's say the main main or somewhere invokes draw square draw square let's see well which has parameters x y starting point i'm just making it up okay so let's say um, it's uh, um, invokes with the draw square draw square will likely uh, invoke draw line four times right because to draw a square you draw one line second line third line fourth line right so that we are assuming that it's going to use the draw line four times that's a string naming convention um, okay so this guy is going to invoke draw line right with the different part let's say it's going to use the end points or something okay so it's going to be x1 y1 x2 y2 something like that it's compute say x1 y1 and all that so it's going to do draw line four times with the different parameters right so this picture tries to show what happens when it invokes the draw line okay so what happens is in the stack memory you have the uh, you, you basically push the various parameters we need for the draw line right and then the return address return address where to return in the code okay so you have let's see how do I want to show um, in the in the code area you have the code for the you, co you have the code for the draw line right similarly you have the code for draw square right so basically you're going to at some point you're going to invoke here when you're invoking right we are invoking this draw line basically after finishing the processing you have to come back to the next line right so that's why we go ahead and push the return address when you're invoking the draw line you go uh, first you push the parameters for the draw line then you push the return address okay so where to return back after the draw line is done and then continue right so uh, after pushing return address we jump in there jump to the draw line 
as soon as we jump in there the local variables you have it allocates that extra space for the local variables okay so that's how the stack memory mechanism works when you return back from the draw line this whole thing is gone so the stack pointer moves back to this point see the stack pointer which is in the top it moves back down to uh, draw square top of the draw square okay so this portion is uh, called as the stack frame okay stack frame for the draw line routine so now you can imagine how this works when you are invoke using factorial remember this is no recursion the star draw square is invoking draw line but same mechanism is really used even when you use recursion it will be factorial when it invokes factorial again it will stack frame will be there that factorial again it invokes there will be more stack frames okay one thing that's missing here is a return value because it looks like they are all void functions if there's a return value there will be one more item there near the return address as a return value there will be a space okay because uh, um, when you are computing something return value you kind of store it there and then uh, you return back okay um, <coughs> Yeah, I think it it will be right below the return address. Okay, so the return value is stored there. When you after return back, you ex uh, get that value, and uh, and after the getting that value, and then parameters are erased. That's how the stack unwinds. Okay, so this uh, stack builds up, and then it unwinds. Okay, uh, when you return back, return back from the function that we invoked. Okay. So that's how the stack memory is used for recursion. Without stack memory, we cannot uh, really uh, do recursion meaningfully. Okay. Uh, so, do you want to try how the factorial works? Well, again, let's look into the picture. The the code. So, in the, as per this code, there's a return value integer and there's a parameter integer, right? So, let's say we are invoking factorial of 5 from here main. Let's assume that we are invoking factorial of 5. What will happen in the memory? Okay, so you have main. So, let's draw this big stack memory thing. So, the main top of the main here for the main stack frame. Okay, stack memory. So main invokes, let's say factorial of uh, five, okay, factor recursion of five. So parameters are pushed in, parameter is five. We need space for return value, then return address. Return address is pushed in. This is the address of the code inside the main that it has to return after computing, okay. So when you go into the into the factorial function this is the stack frame for factorial right so this portion so this is what will build up as every time when you invoke so so now we are inside this code factorial code if 5 comes in 5 is greater than 1 so return n into factorial recursion of 4 right so that's how it will be so that will be one more stack uh, just to be different i'm just going to use a different color hopefully it's not confusing to you so we push four n minus one we are you know pushing and that's the return value return address so on so that's the stack frame okay so every invocation uh, as you go dig deeper you have more you the one more stack frame so you can see more recursion it goes the the it keeps uh, go stack keeps growing right return value return address so so la, one more 
you can see the original value that we passed in from main to invoke recursion that 5 remains as it is. It is not affected, okay. It is there in the stack very safe, okay. So, here, here, one more return value 1, the past parameter 1, return value and return address, okay. That is the stack frame for the top one. So, here the if condition will fail. So, then then return value is set to 1 and return uh, when you return back. Now, that code uh, the, uh, the multiplication code really kicks in. See, now we get the value back as the 1, this one, right? Because we are returning back. So, this will be 2 into 1. Right, so the one, so the two into one will be return value, return value, right? Because remember, for this invocation, n is equal to two. Okay, so this two into the value returned by from there, so return value two. So again, when you come uh, as the stack unwinds, when it comes here factorial of 2 equal to 2 multiply by 3 return value will be 6 is assigned as 6 okay and then the return back 4 into 6 <coughs> is 24 <coughs> that returns back and uh, 5 into 24 is 120 and the value 120 is returned back to me. Okay. So, you can see the deepest level there are 5 stack frames. Okay. Why? Because we invoked factorial of 5. Let us say we invoke factor of 10. Well, there will be 10 stack frames stacked up, right? And factor of 20, 20 stack frame. Factor of 100, that will be 100 stack frames, right? So, you may be wondering, well, this is going to make take some serious memory, right? Integer takes 4 bytes, that is 4 byte return address depending on the environment. It may be 4 bytes or even 8 bytes, it is a pointer. So, say so looking at anywhere between 12 bytes to 16 bytes or something, right? For each stack frame, what if we invoke factor of 1000? So, stack will build up 1000 stack frames and then unwind back, you know. So, is it possible to run out of memory for stack? The, the, the stack overflow message you might have seen sometimes. You know, we used to actually see a lot more before. We do not see that uh, that much anymore, okay. Why is that? Because uh, compared to the old operating system, the new operating systems, the stack memory is very dynamic. It grows dynamically. So, you start with the one uh, uh, 4 kilobytes or something like some fixed size. Then, as the stack grows, meaning you invoke uh, various functions in a kind of like a recursive manner, right? One function calls another, another function calls another one, you know. so. Similar to recursion, remember only thing recursion is that the function is invoking itself, that is the only difference. So, even without it, there is this uh, stack memory does go up and down depending on uh, uh, how functions and methods uh, function interact, okay. Remember, method is just an object oriented term, they are all same thing, functions, methods, you know, um, sometimes even we call it modules. So, <coughs> So, hopefully get a big picture, you know, so the, the stack overflow does not happen now because stacks grow, stack memory grows uh, dynamically, more memory is allocated whenever, uh, whenever you need more memory is very much allocated. Computer basics, okay. Mm -hmm.